Today, we'd like to give you a brief tour about our upcoming launch on May the 1st, our uh, Edge Cloud Platform Dashboard. So here I'm showing you the homepage. Um, and then to access all the new features, uh, you can click on Dashboard. So which will land us on this page, which has three products on this, uh, on this dashboard. So from left to right is the AI services, uh, middle is the video services, and the upcoming rendering and gaming services. First, let's uh, go into the AI services to, to see what's new there. Okay, I'm just clicking the uh, AI services box, and now we are landing on this model explorer. Uh, for those you might, for those who are familiar with uh, generative AI models, then you probably recognize some uh, familiar names here. So, for example, this uh, Colama, which is a code generation tool, ControlNet is about image generation, and Gemma is uh, a large language models recently released by Google. Right? Scroll down, then we see more models. For example, Stable Diffusion for image generation, Stable Diffusion Video, which is a recently released product from Stability AI for video generation. And we also have the, uh, the variation of Stable Diffusion called Stable Diffusion XL. So today I would like to demo uh, you how to launch a uh, Stable Diffusion model within the Theta Edge network. So first step is just simply click on this box. A model will pop up uh, which says create new deployment for Stable Diffusion. So here, as you can see, those fields are already pre-populated, including deployment ID, an image we are going to deploy onto the uh, Satan Edge cloud. And uh, the port here uh, will be used to host the web UI, so which is already filled out for you. And then here, uh, the VM type means that what type of VM you want to run this model with. So we have a variety of choices uh, from the low-end CPU-only machines to very high-end that with GPUs like NVIDIA's 800 machine. So for the stable diffusion, I would like to launch it with uh, a NVIDIA T4 machine. So I just need to click on it. And then here shows replica. So this number means that how many VMs you can deploy your model to in parallel. So by default, the choice is one, but uh, obviously you can increase that to two or three or more. So for this demo, I will just start with one. And you might have noticed here, uh, there's a cost estimation for you. It shows how, how much you have to pay for each uh, hour. And if you increase this replica to two, from one to two, you can see that this number just double. Okay, so after you choose the VM type you, you want to launch with, then you can just simply click on create new deployment. So this will redirect you to this model deployment tab where you can see the deployment that you just uh, issued. So here is the status. Uh, it shows that whether this deployment is ready for use. So. And then we have this duration, meaning that uh, you know I, this indicates that I started this deployment just a few seconds ago. And here you can also see your hardware. For example, I'm launching this deployment on a two core uh, with uh, 60 gigabyte memory and with a GPU type of NVIDIA T4. You can click on this deployment to see its details. On the de detail page, you have the inference endpoint, which I will click shortly to show you what it looks like. But down here, you can see the detail of your deployment. For example, the status of your uh, the, the, the replicas, and then how many replicas do you have, and, and the hardware spec of the uh, VM you chose. On the notes tab, it shows that the status of each replica. For example, since I only run with one replica, then it only shows one row, and then the status is running. So now let's go back to the detail page, and then we can click on this inference endpoint to see how it looks like. Okay, so here, for those of you who are familiar with the stable diffusion, you might recognize this is the uh, uh, automatic uh, 1111 web UI. So where uh, we have this boxes to, to, to input some prompt you want to generate. So here, I will just type in simply a doc. And next, I will just type generate. So this will take some time, the first time to load the models, but after that, we will quickly work on the image generation. Okay, so we got a doc here. Uh, we can click here and, and show its details. It's a cute doc, uh, but if you uh, examine the, the image closely, you might find that it doesn't have much of detail. So what we can do is give a little more description. For example, I, we can say a cute doc, and we want it to be a realistic style. Style, and then uh, maybe we want highly detailed. Okay. 
And then since we want a realistic style, maybe in the in this input box, which is the negative prompt, mean, meaning that the uh, the attribute you, you don't want to have in your generated image, then you can type in something like, I don't want cartoon style. I don't want animation style. Okay, so after this, then we can click on generate again. So within a few seconds, a new image is generated. So if you click on it, you can see compared to the previous image, it has much more detail, right? For example, you can see the hair of the dog, right? And then it's also a close look of the dog. So you can play with this UI with different type of prompts. And then also there's a lot of parameters that you can tune for your image generation. In addition to this web UI, we are going to provide you with the API interface and documentation so that if you are developers, then you can use those API to integrate stable diffusion into your application. Okay, now let's go back to our deployment page. So here, what I just show is the serving capability. So remember that on this page, what we have here are the most popular generative AI models, but we also implement this feature, which allows you to create a custom template from a container you make, right? For those who are more tech savvy, also for those who want to make special effect or something, then, or you want to run some, some other type of a generative AI task, then you are free to compose your own Docker container. And then from there, then you can use our custom template feature to create a, a deployment template for your container, right? So if you click on this plus icon, so this will be a model for create a new custom template. So here you can fill in your name, and then here, most importantly, you can give the uh, container image URL. For example, if you host your container on, on Docker Hub, this will be a Docker Hub image URL. And then on the container port here, then you can input a port which will host your web UI or API endpoint. So here we also provide the container argument, which is optional. So in case your container requires some uh, arguments, then you can put it here so that it will be passed onto your compute, uh, container when it is being deployed. So I have pre-populated a custom template for Comfy UI. So for, for those who those of you who are familiar with uh, stable diffusion, this is also a very popular tool right, among the uh, stable diffusion community. So here I have the uh, container image uh, URL for a Comfy UI container, and then I have the the port for its UI, right? And then if I hit this create a new deployment, it will just deploy that and, and I can use this custom deployment, uh, right? Aside from the uh, stand, standard template provided by, by the platform. Okay, so this is the serving feature. So this is the first feature under the AI service product. Uh, in addition to that, we also offer the prototyping tools, in particular, the Jupyter Notebook, right? So. For, for, for the audience who are a data scientist or machine learning engineer, you are probably very familiar with this tool. But let me still give a tour here to see how we can run it within Theta Edge Cloud, right? So I'm going, I'm, I just navigated to this Jupyter Notebook tab. So what you can see here is an empty page, right? So, but I can click here, a new notebook to cre create a new notebook, okay? So I just click on it. And then most of this, the few are pre-populated. Um, so, uh, but this notebook image here, we, we actually provided like, two, two flavors of the image. The first one is the base no notebook, right? very lightweight. But the second one will be equipped with PyTorch and CUDA. It's a full support. So if you want to run some kind of advanced deep learning experiment, so it will be preferred to use the second one. So, but for today, for the demonstration purposes, I will just launch the first one, okay? Uh, and then similar to the other model deployment, you have to choose your uh, VM type here, right? So uh, for this one, because I'm launching a base model, uh, base notebook, so I will just use the, the lowest VM available, which is the C1 type. So, oh, I uh, also want to, to mention here, so you may want to set a password for your notebook, right? So let's say by default, it will not uh, require any password, but if you want to set a password, you can just click on here and enter your password. So, but uh, for this demo purposes, I will not uh, use password and then we can just go from here. Okay. So after clicking on create a notebook, it will direct me to this page, which uh, similar to the uh, model deployment page, we will also have this row for each notebook, right? And then it shows its status, right? So what kind of hardware it runs on and then is the running duration. <clears throat> so it also have this um, button open. So if I click on it, 
you know, as expected, the Jupyter Notebook will be rendered on this page. Right? This notebook is very useful. First of all, you can just click on create a notebook, right? And then you can use Python within this notebook interactively. For example, I will just try print and hello data edge cloud. Capital. Okay, and then I can just run it. Okay, so as expected, uh, it prints out hello data edge cloud. Okay. So I can just continue on. But I want to show you something really cool is that if you already have a notebook, you know, written and, and saved somewhere and you're locally on your on your laptop, then you can upload it to the, the edge cloud environment. So what you can do here is to click on this icon. I have prepared some examples. So uh, for example, the, the notebook here is an example and dash request dot uh, ipy notebook. So just click on it, uh, click on open. So as you can see, this notebook has been uploaded to the, uh, the, the VM we just created it. So I can just double click on it and then see, so the notebook, the content of notebook is showing in this window. So we can try to run it. So. As you can see that as I run each step, it, it, will, it will print some of the uh, results back, right? So for example, for, for this slide, originally it was UTF-8, right? But I, if I press it, it becomes like ISO A959 and dash one. So this is a notebook, but in addition to this notebook, you can also launch a terminal for those of you accustomed to command line interface that you really, really like it. So this is a full-fledged command line interface. You can, you know, try the command you like the most, for example, top, right? You can see this machine here, right? And this usage, you can do an LS and make DR and all that. So it all, all works. So you can essentially use this as a virtual machine, right? To run Python and other experiments you want uh, in this environment. Okay, so those are the, the new features we want to offer uh, you for the May 1st launch. So for this AI feature, we will have serving, right? For uh, different various kinds of models. And also you can create a new custom template but also we also offer you a, a prototyping environment so you can use Jupyter Notebook to do your, your experiments. Okay, so now let's never get back to the uh, dashboard. So let's now spend a bit of time to explore the second feature, which, which is the video uh, services. Right. I will just continue to click on this uh, video services. So here, for those who use Data Video APAC before, you'll see you know, all the familiar features here. For example, I can just create a new video right, by uploading a video from my laptop. And then after that, you know, I can select different options here. For example, what kind of resolution I want to transcode it into. And then very cool here is that you can uh, enable the NFT-based DRM, which is our patented technology for this video, right? If this is got enabled, then only the users owning a certain NFT can watch this video stream. Other people will not be able to watch that. And then uh, you can add NFT either on, on Theta network or Ethereum network, and we also support a few others, including a Polygon, right? and also hog chain, which is, which is a sub-chain on the Theta network. Right. And if you hit save, then, and all, if you have already uploaded a video, then this video will, will, will be transcoded and then available on this page. So before this demo, I have already uh, transcoded a video and I would like to click through and see how it looks like. So if I click on this row, you will see that the transcoded video is listed here, right? This is the uh, URL of that video. So you can use it in your website or even better that we also provide you with a iframe embed code so you can directly use it in your website. Or if you want to integrate it using uh, video.js, a JavaScript, then you can also do so. And going back to the video product dashboard, we also offer a live stream services that you can start a stream here, right? Of course, you can have settings and, and other, uh, other good stuff uh, under this video product. Uh, never getting back to the uh, Edge Cloud dashboard. Those are the two main products we are going to launch with uh, on May the 1st. Aside from that, in order for our uh, say the Edge Cloud to be able to use for uh, more complex projects, we also in implemented a lot of uh, project management features. So you might have noticed that on top here, then it says default project, right? So if I click on it, uh, it will actually shows the project I created for my for my account. So what what is a project? In many cases, right, in a company that um, maybe you have different teams working on different projects, then you want to have some some a separate environment for each team, right? So that each team uh, does not interfere with each other. Okay, so let's click on this uh, drop down menu. So we have two projects here. One is default project, 
which uh, the other one is the AGI Tomorrow. It's the, it's the second project I created. It. Under the current default project, I have this stable diffusion deployment that I deployed like 22 seconds ago, right? So let's say if I switch to the AGI Tomorrow, then you will see no deployment here, which means that you know the resources for each different project has been uh, segregated, uh, you know, um, in, so so that they don't interfere with with uh, each other. Okay, let's go back to uh, the default project. And then, by the way, if you want to create a new project, it's very simple. You click that drop down menu again, and then on this model, you just click on new project, and then put in your name. Then you have your new project there. The one last thing I want to tour you through is the settings menu. So on setting menu, obviously there's a profile. You you can change your name and your email here. And then on the security, you can set up your password, right? The next feature I want to show you is a team feature. So this allows you to invite your colleagues to the project uh, that you are currently working on. So click on this project uh, tab. So you can see, you can list the detail of your project here. You might notice that on the right side that you can see some of the uh, icons here, which each of this icon represent a team member. So if you click uh, into this project, then you can see the full name and the email of your team members. And then it also allows you to invite new team members. This is very simple. Just click on invite new uh, team members and then you can enter your colleague's name. And then uh, here you can also give him a, a role, right? Be it an admin or an editor or just a member of this team. Next, I would like to show you the quota. So here, here I, this is it's listed the available machine types and then how many quota you have, your organization actually have. And lastly, it's a building feature. Here, we will allow you to uh, link your account to your Stripe account <clears throat> so that you can pay for um, the, the usage of Edge Cloud. Edge Cloud also will support like paying with TFU in the future. And also, we will have this coupon. Then if you got a coupon from your friend or from, from the team, then you can apply the coupon to add to your uh, credit balance. Uh, okay, so this is some of the main features we are going to launch on May the 1st. We hope you like these features and we are hoping to see more uh, AI-related applications will be built on top of, say, the Edge Cloud.